All right, so Aaron is back uh, on the pad- podcast again. We are talking about Predator 2. We talked about Predator 1. Uh, it's been over a month now. I don't know. I think uh, Valentine's Day messed us up the first time, and then I kept canceling. You jerk. I'm considerate. But, uh, we're yeah, finally... I, I'll, I'll agree to that answer. <laughs> we're finally uh, doing it in the middle of my 100-hour stream. Uh, I have, I've been awake currently, it's coming to the end, we've, we've fallen asleep a few times, we've taken breaks, but me and Ken have been passing off the buck to, uh, finish this 100 hour stream, and I've been up for 15 hours now, almost 15 hours, and, yeah, this time was specifically chosen by me, yeah, I got 15 more to go, but I'm feeling good <laughs> right now, been, uh, playing some video games, hanging out, watching bad videos, I watched uh, It's Everyday Bro by Jake Paul for two hours straight earlier. That was a good time. Uh, but yeah, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Predator 2, which is probably worse. I honestly enjoyed It's Everyday Bro more than I did uh, Predator 2. That's going to be my question was, what would you rather do, watch Predator 2 again or the two hours of It's Everyday Bro? I would rather watch ten hours of It's Everyday Bro. And watch Predator 2 again. I don't know if I could agree with that because why would I watch something that's painful for 10 hours rather than something that's like an hour and a half? Would you rather get poked with a needle 10 times or shot with a gun once? Where are you going to shoot me at? In the face. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, of course I'm going to take a needle. I'm going to take a needle. Uh, but, where, you know, where would you rather get shot at? Like, uh, I, if I got to choose the gun and the caliber, then, like, shoot me in the leg. What what gun and caliber are you going to choose? Uh, I would take a Ruger <laughs> SR-22, which is a twenty two <laughs> bullet, and shoot, and shoot me in the leg with it. Versus getting put with a needle? That's still a bullet. Huh? That's still a bullet. So? Have you never seen the video of the dude shooting himself in the face? No. It looked like he was in that much pain. <laughs> Yeah, there was a rapper that took a gun, yeah. a twenty two gun, and, and stuck it right here and shot, and the bullet went through both cheeks. He was fine. In his car, right? I believe so, yeah. I've seen the edited version of that, where they cut it off and they just play the audio, and you hear him talking. He's like, I have to get to the hospital and all this stuff. I've yeah. never, I didn't see where it actually went through his face. Sorry. It's okay. Let's get back to something worse than... <laughs> shot in uh, Predator 2 stars Danny Glover and it, this movie is a mess coming from the first Predator which they're in the jungle mm-hmm. and they're fighting a Predator right and Arnold Schwarzenegger right. wins defeats Predator but he gets lucky coming into this one this makes no sense uh can you explain to me? So it opens up and there's a gang fight. There's a gang fighting with the police and a big shootout. Yes. And then all of a sudden the predator decides, I need to kill everyone in this gang. Because he hunts them down intentionally, just the gang members. And I could right. not understand what the vendetta was for the predator versus the gang members. Uh, the only thing I could think of to explain the Predator's hate for the gang members was the fact they needed to figure out a way to get from the beginning of the movie to him and Danny Glover fighting at the end. But so the Predator, the Predator fights with the gang members at the shootout. Right. Fight, right. Tracks them down to their apartment. Tracks them down onto the train, the subway. And every time only kills the gang members. And I could not figure out for the life of me what his issue with the gang members was. Oh, let's not leave out the beginning of the movie as far as you have this gang member who, this this entire gang Mm -hmm. that has the firepower that is more entire police force. Right? Yeah. They had them all at bay. Yeah. Lover shows up, drives right in the middle of everything, and just starts shooting them one by one. You have an entire police force that's with automatic weapons. He shows up with a 
and just starts killing them one by one. Yeah. To the point where um, there was one gun that he had that made it extra powerful because it had a scope on it. And a six shooter with scope on it. <laughs> That's how you know you're serious. Yeah, super serious. And yeah, Mr. Potato says Predator was released in 1990, and I think we talked about it kind of where it was kind of, you know, it was released in 1990. So I mean, it was either filmed in 88 or 89. Yeah. So they were still in the mindset of like Commando, yeah. of one guy versus an entire army. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's definitely what this was, right? Like he he had to, right. he had uh, other people in the police force. But none of them did anything. No one helped. They right. kind of got in the way, and then uh, he took care of everything. And he didn't he didn't do a good job. He just was out of the way every time the predator attacked. He wasn't right. like, capable of fighting the predator, but he was able to stay away from him. Well, as far as his, the Predator's attack on the gang members, the only thing I can think of is, like I said, uh, they were just trying to get to the point where they could have Danny Glover and the Predator cross paths finally. Well, no, I, I, can, I understand it from a writing point of view, but the logic, the internal logic within the script is just not there. Right. It's just crazy. Is it, it's right. like, what's the purpose of the Predator hunting down these members of a gang? I would think he would just hunt down anybody. Well, the, the, the lore of the Predator is he only attacks people that, that bring um, a challenge to him. perfect example is when he, um, he had the lady mm-hmm. subway, and he scanned her and saw that she was, for one, she didn't have a gun, and two, she had a baby, didn't kill her. Yeah, that's right. And and in another movie, um, uh, Predators versus Aliens, uh, goes to attack the Predator. The Predator scans him and sees that he's got cancer throughout his body, and then puts him down and walks away. Okay. So, but it, that, yeah, so that, that hasn't a, been established yet, right? Oh, uh, I think this movie. I think this. I think this movie established it. <laughs> Maybe maybe in the first movie because when um, the predator attacked, I think the guy in the glasses. Yeah, he, he killed the guy in the glasses, but left the the defenseless woman uh, alone. Yeah, that's right. I guess so. It could have been, but there could have been a book or something showing yeah. there's some sort of honor system within it. Yeah, but they definitely don't do a good enough job to let you know what's happening. No, and he also left the the naked lady uh, later on in the movie. Yeah, he didn't kill her either. Yeah. Um. Well, how do you want to talk about this? How what 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 do you consider the best way? Because I would say just like kind of like what we do with uh, the other movies, just kind of like tell the story of this movie and hope that everyone that's in jail stays. <laughs> well, so it's a really bad movie. I can't even. It, I remember it pretty well, but it's so mm-hmm. disjointed from scene to scene. Like, I don't know if I could even lay it out for you. Well, I mean, we had the gun battle at the beginning, okay. and then you have a bunch of... Oh, speaking <clears throat> of which, yeah, but- this, this must have been the lowest budgeted movie ever, because every time someone walked on screen, they were sweating through their suit jackets. You could see uh, sweat stains on their backs through their jackets. Like, they must have been so It takes place hot. in L.A. in the summer. It, take, it takes place uh, in L.A. in the summer. There were, I think that was the point. Everyone was supposed to be sweating. You don't sweat through your suit jacket. When you do multiple takes, you do. <laughs> yeah, when, not, <laughs> not in real life. <laughs> because because uh, Danny Glover was constantly sweating through this entire film. Yeah, everybody was. Everyone was just bucket sweat. Let's see. Father Ironheart says, Predators are hunters and always looking for a good hunt fight. But everyone showed that with the first fight, Arnold, because he could keep up with him. The f- showed that with the fifth fight with Arnold because he could keep up with him. Hmm. But yeah, well, no, Arnold couldn't keep up with him. No, Arnold was that Arnold, last. Yeah, there was never a point where Arnold Schwarzenegger was in control of the fight. He just got lucky. He would. 
Yeah. But, uh, I see. I thought I thought that too far, uh, Father Ironheart. If you go back and you watch that last punches a predator in the face, and the predator does nothing but absolutely, absolutely just like punch him into the into the ground. Yeah. He doesn't he like lift him up by his throat, and then he just punches him and flips over and flips over every time he gets hit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there's the big gunfight in the street. Uh, Danny Glover comes back yeah. to the police station, talks to the chief, and the chief is like, "Hey, hey, problem, problem. You're you're reckless." And, you know the same thing every police chief ever says. Uh, but they they find the bodies that the predator kills, and they don't know what's happening. They like they think that it's a, another gang. It, I can't remember who do they think that the predator. Who do they blame the predator's kills on? We had some technical, technical, technical difficulties. We were back. Uh, we're still talking about Predator Two. Um, I don't remember what we we're saying though. Oh, there you are. We're talking about how you love again. this movie. Yeah, we we're talking about how much you love this movie, and I was trying to talk you out of how much you loved it. I think this is number one greatest movie of all time. So you think this movie's better than Hard Rain? Every any movie you could say, this movie's better than. <laughs> the Matrix Revolutions and it has nothing on this movie. <laughs> um, yeah. So, like, there's really not much to say about any of it. It's all crazy to me. Like, there's nothing that yeah. there's nothing that stands out that was like, oh, that was cool or that was crazy. It was just like they would go to a new set piece. The predator would show up, kill the Mexicans, leave. The cops would show or up. Or Jamaicans. Were they Jamaican? Did I just... Well, there was, there was a, there was a uh, Cuban... I think it was Cuban. It was either Cuban or Mexican cartel, and then there was Jamaican cartel. How could you forget the Jamaican cartel? Well, I thought they were all they were the doing same voodoo. Team. I do remember that. They were doing voodoo on yeah. uh, the Jamaican leader. or no, They were they did voodoo on the Mexican leaders. That's just of Mexican. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Mexican. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But he, yeah, the Jamaican guy cut out his heart. Yeah. But I thought, I thought they were all part of the same thing and they were just double crossing each other. I didn't realize they were two separate cartels. Or I think they were, they were two separate cartels, right? But they were supposed to be working together, but they were double crossing each other. Okay. Which was causing the war on the streets. Yeah. See, like, this movie, I don't feel like this movie established anything very well. And then. No, I didn't. There's like 40 minutes where it's just detective work on Danny Glover doing detective work, and you don't learn anything. Right. Like there is no, there is nothing of value. There's not even like exposition that sets everything up. He just like goes and talks to people for nothing. Because we, the audience, we know it's the predator doing all these murders, and yet. Here you got the here you got Danny Glover shaking down people trying to figure out what the cartels are doing, and it's just so pointless. It's so bad. But it's pointless because, like you were just saying, the audience already knows what's going on. <laughs> so, um, so to us, we're just like, okay, we know there's going to be a point where there's going to be fighting, so let's just get there. Yeah. But they took so long to get to that. It's crazy. Yeah. Plague says it's Colombian and Jamaican, not Mexican. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds, sounds like uh, this is one of his favorite movies, so he's got it memorized. Because <laughs> we watched it, we watched it a month ago, and I, I just remember the Jamaicans. Yeah, the, the Jamaican and Colombian sounds very eighties slash nineties. So, so the only thing it was missing is a terrorist attack from from you know Iraq or whatever. <laughs> uh so. Danny Glover is looking for these cartels, trying to find them, and he stumbles upon the Predator. He sees them, he likes trying to chase them down, and gets picked up by the FBI, by the CIA, uh, by Gary Busey's A team. I think it's I think it's like a rogue group off of the FBI, I think is what we got. Yeah. One of the- let's not forget. Let's not forget. That it was Gary Busey and Adam Baldwin. 
Was Adam Baldwin in there? I don't remember. Yeah. Adam Baldwin. How did you forget Adam Baldwin? I don't know. There's the only guy that one. survived out of. He was the only guy that survived out of the group. Alec Baldwin was the only one I care about. Oh well, then you don't know who Adam Baldwin is. He is the way better one. <laughs> uh, play says I looked it up on Wikipedia. I've only watched seven minutes of it, and it was awful. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't. It's seven. It doesn't get better after those seven minutes. It only gets that worse. Seven minutes of your life, you will never be able to get back. <laughs> uh, but they pick him up, and they say they've been chasing down the predator. Since everything happened in the jungle. Right. Uh, I don't know. I felt like they had too much information on the Predator. Like they figured out a lot of stuff that didn't seem to add up to me. Like I. Would you. you In the trailer. Like I felt like. In the trailer scene. In the trailer scene. There was a lot of information given by Gary Busey. Like he. Uh, they debriefed Arnold's character two years prior yeah. to find out everything that happened in the jungle. So that's how they knew the information that they had. Yeah, but even I don't feel like Arnold really would have had that much information, like based on everything that happened, other than like he it's heat uh, seeking, but it also is not. But I, I don't know. There, there's something weird in this where he takes off his mask and is still using the heat seeking stuff. Right. Brighter. Well, it's maybe their eyes are. I don't know. <laughs> it's just there's no <laughs> there's no logic. There's no consistency. It makes it really hard to right to process. You know. Right. What's your favorite part about this movie? Part about the movie has to be when Gary Busey gets it, just because it was such a um, a funny slash awesome. <laughs> Awesome scene because he's like, you know, you think he's dead, yeah. and then he shows up and it's for some reason, right? And he goes from talking in his normal Gary Busey voice to now because his face has been burned a little bit. Yeah. He's now talking really, really low. <laughs> I'm gonna get this guy, and just made me laugh, just because we all know how crazy Gary Busey is. Yeah, yeah. It he he was the best part of this movie. Every time he was on scene, I. I, he wasn't that crazy in this movie. He seemed pretty mm-hmm. normal, like pretty reserved. But knowing him now after his motorcycle accident, it's like... Yeah, this was this was way pre-motorcycle accident. Yeah. But n- knowing his personality now, it's just so weird to see him. You know, like, he just is like... Normal? Yeah, well, you, you just can't separate the craziness now from him then. You know? Like, anytime you see him, you're just like... Right. But what what about you? What was your favorite scene? Um yeah, I would say when Gary Busey came back, I think Gary Busey was my favorite part of it. The the weirdest part was the ending. And I, I don't know if that was just to establish the the next movie, but when Danny Glover you know, kind of fights off the, the predator and kills him. It reveals that there's been six other predators on the ship, and they spoilers. Like, oh, nope. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, that there are six others on the ship, and they respect him for being able to kill off the other predator. They give him that gun from yeah. the '80s, which was that established? That that was nothing, right? That. I wasn't supposed to know what that gun was before he handed it to him, right? Well, it wasn't the eight. It wasn't the. It wasn't the eighties. It was like eighteen hundreds. Eighteen hundreds. I meant. Yeah, it was like eighteen ninety two or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I don't know if they branded their guns uh, back then, the year that they were made. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, it, yeah, it I was just it, to show. I think it had someone's name on it. It was like a. It, it could have been. It was like his own engraving, but like. I think the point was to show that they'd been on the Earth for a hundred years. It was yeah, hunting people. Yeah, but it was just like such a weird, out of left field turn to be like, "Oh, there's been six of them all this time, and now they're just leaving," and that was the end of the movie. Yeah, it was. I just looked it up. It's some guy named Raphael Alden. Mm. And it was 1715. 1715. Okay. Was the gun. Yeah, 1715. So he they either came <laughs> back 
Because the, in the first one, we see the predator land, right? We see a spaceship right. in, a, in space and land and come and fight. So they either come for sport, like a vacation, or they've been there the entire time just killing people and have been sneaky about it. Right. But for some reason, Danny sure. Glover... Right, because it... Danny Glover is able to take one out. Yeah. And that was also a pretty good line as well. When he kills one, he turns around, they all come, and he's like, all right, who's next? Yeah. <laughs> but he drops the weapon. <laughs> Yeah. He like he was resigned to die at that point. Right. But I don't know. I don't really have but, uh, anything else to say about this movie. This one Oh. Like there's we could we could talk about each scene, but there's nothing like that stood out to me about it. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing important for me. Right. The train stuff the was weird that the again like it, the weirdest stuff was that the Predators were hunting down the gang specifically. And I just, it just made me mad that it didn't make any sense. Right. Well, I mean, I was thinking about it the other day because we're watching all of the Predator uh, movies. Do we, do we add in a movie called Batman Dead End? Do, do we want to watch that? Have you seen that movie? Batman Dead End? Like the the Dark Knight Batman? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, Batman. Yeah. No, I have not seen that. Did I cross no, that? you should look it up. It's a, gr- it's a great fan film. Yeah. No. It's a great fan film where um, this Batman is hunting down the Joker, and uh, he's basically tracked him down to, and uh, that's all I can tell you. Yeah. Just know that. I mean the Predator. I told you it's a Predator movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd be down for watching that. We can uh, maybe after we do Alien versus Predator. Does it? Because it's not canonical, right? I mean Batman. I don't think. Well, Batman fought everybody. That's true. So at one point he's fought Predator. At one point he's fought Alien, and that's why they did this. They did this movie. Yeah. Well, do you? I'm have- looking up right now. Sorry, go ahead. Do you have anything else about Predator 2? Everyone go see this movie. <laughs> hey, thanks for the alert, Turtle Bites. But yeah, so Aaron is from the Fire Resistant Podcast, which is a great podcast on Twitch. Him and his buddy uh, Fred get together a couple times a week. Come and just, you know, talk about the Bible, answer questions, hang out with chat. And he's been uh, gracious enough to come on and watch bad movies with me. Come on and talk about them. We're going to do uh, Alien vs. Predator with Taylor once we get to it. So we got Predator 3 next, and then uh, and then we got uh, Predators after that. Something, my internet died again, but I'll just wrap this up. Um, go check them out. We'll be back next week, and thanks for listening.